Okay, so in this video, we will explore equilibrium forces. So what do we mean by equilibrium forces? Well, when we say all forces in a system are balanced, we are saying that the system is in a state of equilibrium. That is to say that the summation of forces then should all be equal to zero. And if we were to consider this in uh, the forces in the system, to be in their component form, we'd say that the forces in the x direction are equal to zero and the forces in the y direction are equal to zero. So to explore this topic just a little bit more, we will explore an actual example. In this example, we have a set of strings or a system of strings. And along with the system of strings, we have two masses that are hanging from the system of strings. We have a mass here and we also have a mass here. Now, if, we, uh, if the system is not moving in the x direction, or no object is moving in the x direction as a system, and no object is moving in the right direction, none is moving up, none is moving down, then we're saying that this system is in equilibrium. In order for this system to be in equilibrium, again, remember, all forces need to be equal to zero. So let's look at this system, and we're going to divide the system into two parts. Let's start with the left side first. And on the left side, we may say that there's tension in the string, or here, and we'll call this tension 1. We also know that we have a mass, and that mass will have a weight to it. And so we have W1 pointing downward in the y direction. And we also know that there is tension in the string pulling towards the right, based off of what we see here. All right? So given that this is the case, um, you'll also notice actually that T1 is not pointing in the uh, directly in the y direction, meaning up or down, or it's not pointing directly in the x direction, meaning left or right. So therefore, that has components. And because that has components, we can break that T1 into two parts. We have a T1y that's going to be pointing upwards, and we have a T1x which will be pointing towards the left. Now, again, recall that this system does not have any movement in the x and y direction or in any direction whatsoever. So because there's no movement in the system, what this means then is that, let's start with our uh, w, our weight. The weight has to be equal to t1y. So what we're saying is, because there's no forces, uh, the summation of forces in the y direction should be equal to zero, There's this T1y is opposing the W1 here. Okay, and so therefore T1y is equal to W1. We may also say that T1x here is equal to T3, and that's because, again, there's no movement in the x direction. So therefore this has to be equal to this, as stated there. All right, so now that's the set of forces we have over on the left side. Now let's connect this to the forces on the right side. Well, we know that within the string here, that the T, the T, we have T3 here. This has to be equal to the tension that's pulling over on this side, right? So these two are definitely equal to each other, which is what we have here. Okay, we also know that we have tension in this part of the string system, and we'll call that T2. Okay, we'll call that T2. Now, we know that that T2 has two components to it because it's not pointing directly upward, pointing directly downward to the left or to the right, and so therefore it can be broken into components. And those components are, again, we have one in the, T, in the X direction, and we have one in the Y direction. Okay, so what else do we have? Well, well, before we get to what else do we have, remember that we said that the, nothing is moving in this system. So therefore, our T2x here has to be equal to the T3 from the other side, right? Okay, because, and therefore, because these are equal to each other, there's no movement in the x direction. Okay, what else may we, may we say? There we go. Well, we know that we have a weight that's pulling downward, and we can call this W2. And because we have that weight that's pulling downward, we know that that W2 has to be equal to the two, to T2Y. 
And the reason it has to be equal is because remember we have a, a system here where we're saying that it's in equilibrium. Nothing is moving in the X, nothing is moving in the Y. Okay? And so therefore then again, T2Y has to be equal to W2. Anything else that we can mention from this? Well, let's remember over on this side that T1Y, or pardon me, T1, actually was on an angle. It didn't have any X component or any Y component. So therefore, we can say that there is a uh, angle here between the T1 and the T1X component, and we'll call the angle T, uh, oh, pardon me, theta 1. We also know that over on the right side, side we have theta 2. Okay, so by using this additional information, we can say a few other things. We can add a few more important equations to help us solve for the system of equations here. And we may say, you remember, uh, well, first of all, we said that the W, we had a W pulling downward. That W, remember, is equal to M times G. We can say also that the, the using the theta information, we can find, for instance, Tx, and that Tx, remember, is equal to T cosine theta, if you've seen that before within some sort of a physics class or something. Okay, And we may also say that Ty is equal to T sine theta. So what we're saying here is that if we take T1 here, take the cosine of it, if we know this theta here, okay, we can find the x component. And if we have the T1 here, and we know theta 1 here, and we have the, we take the sine of it, we can find the y component here. Okay. So let's say you encountered a system like this, all right? You can find theta by using, let's say, a protractor. And I do have a video on YouTube that you can uh, review in order to understand how to use a protractor within um, an experiment in order to figure out what the theta or the angle is of, let's say, a system that is set up very similar to this with the uh, string system that is set up very similar to this where we have two masses hanging from it. All right. So again, uh, please do review this. Uh, if you're a little bit confused, you can definitely go back and review the video. Make sure you understand it because it's a very important concept. And if you understand it, any problem that is similar to this where you have a system of equations or a system of uh, forces, pardon me, and if you're told that those system of forces are in equilibrium, then you can actually analyze it very similar to this, where you start from one side of the system, you look at all the tensions and all the forces and all the weights or whatever that are on one side, and equate that to the forces and tensions and the weights over on the second side, and you'll be able to solve that uh, system of equations. All right, so this, uh, this video, again, was on equilibrium forces. Uh, please do check out my YouTube website for additional uh, videos that may help to explain this type of a problem. Uh, for additional, uh, more complicated type uh, situations, whether it be within physics or engineering, you can also check out my website at www.clyletsum.com. Again, that's www.clyletsum.com.